Hi, George here. In this project we're going to combine several different techniques to replace this background here with a much more interesting background and also clean the image up a little bit. Our first step is to bring in our new background image into this file. So I'll go up here to File, come down to Place, and we'll use this one down here, this standard horizon. I'll just click in here someplace. There we go. Now this file is too large, so I need to shrink this down. I'm just going to grab the corner here and pull the corners in until I shrink the image down to fit. And we'll just get a position basically where I want it. Okay, that fits pretty well just about like that. So this is above our background, that's fine. I'm going to bring the opacity down on this so I can see what's showing. And I'll move this up. I just want to have just a few of those mountains showing in the background in there. Kind of like that, just a few mountains and some clouds up there and that looks fine. Okay, bring our opacity back up again. All right, that's positioned properly. We now need to get rid of this haze in here. So we'll use that haze removal filter. So filters come down to haze removal. And that's pretty good at that first shot. I think that's good enough. I'll just leave it at that setting and we'll apply that. Okay, now come down to our background layer here. We'll make a duplicate of the background layer. Right click and duplicate. Take the duplicate and pull it above our new background. So there we go. This will be our foreground. And then in behind this, there's that background right there. Okay, now let's clean up our edges a little bit in here. I'll zoom in on that. We'll grab our zoom tool and let's zoom in a bit. We have all these really bad edges as you can see in here. Let's clean all this stuff up a bit. Let's now go over here and grab the medium brush tool right there. Now that size is too large. Let's bring our size down. That's a pretty good size. Let's just check that. Okay, that works out well. Now I'm just going to go around all of these edges and get nice clean edges in here using this tool. And I'll go through and do this on the rest of the photograph and get all this stuff taken care of. And we'll then come back and work on that background. One more thing I will do is come in and do a little bit of cleanup inside some of these areas like that, just to get the picture looking as, as good as possible on this. And just use this one tool, which is great at this kind of work, taking out these little artifacts that you tend to get from JPEG processing. So this is a process which can take a little bit of time, what you want to do with this is to stay away from your hard edges as much as possible or just tap into them like that and that's to prevent any distortion coming in and stay away from any real detail which might get blurred. I'm just scrolling there with the mouse and then just go through and work on cleaning out any of these little JPEG artifacts that don't look that good in the image. To do a proper job on this you'll have to go through and make sure that you check the whole picture so that everything matches. If one spot is clean and something else isn't, it's going to look a bit fake. So you will have to go through and do this throughout the whole picture. And that can take a little bit of work. That's fine. And you may have to come in and adjust the size of your brush a few times to get the little small details. Depends upon the individual image. Okay, I'll go ahead now and pause the video and I'll finish this step, which will take me a few minutes to do. Once that's done, I'll bring the video back up again and we'll work on replacing that background. Okay, there we go. There's the picture all nicely cleaned up using that tool and getting rid of as much of that pixelization as I could. I think it looks a lot better now. It looks much more like a regular photograph, not just a really bad picture. We can now try to remove the sky in here. Several different techniques to select out the sky. And I won't be doing it to a total finish to do this really properly and do it well. It would take me quite a while to be very careful about this selection process. But let me show you the basics involved and then you can refine those on your own time. The first thing you want to do is to try different brushes in here. The flood select tool is a good one to start off with. Notice up here we have the tolerance at 20 and it says contiguous. This means touching. So I'll choose up in here someplace and let's see what that gets for me. Choose our layer we want to be working on. There we go. And then click in here. And as you can see, it's cutting into our image quite a bit down here. So the 20 tolerance is too high. Let's just deselect that. Let's bring this down to half of that. I'll put this at 10%. We'll try that again. And that's a lot closer. I think that's in pretty good. It's missing it a little bit right up in here. It's good around most of the airplane. And it's pretty good over in there. And it's missing some spots right in here. Now you can use different techniques to come in and make your selections. This is just one selection tool. We can also use the selection brush tool right here. And for that, I can just brush in and make a selection. Now that's subtract. I'm going to add right here. And let's just add into that selection get that bit. Let's go across the top here, clean that up. That's all pretty good. Now right in here, and there's a bit right there, I can catch that. In here I can come in a lot closer. We'll just use the zoom tool for this and we'll zoom in on that. 
and then I'll use that same tool and I'll bring the brush size down. It's right here. Bring the brush size way down. There we are. And I can carefully come in here and then just paint in into that selection. I'm just adding it into my existing selection. So you have this technique and this can, of course, as you see, be pretty good. It depends. I'm a little bit off right there. This is mostly good for areas like this, kind of as kind of a soft, rough edge. It's good for those. If you have a hard edge to work against, then there are other tools that are also available you can use. I'm just going to do this kind of fast in here for this and just get close to this and get us pretty good. There we go. If you hold the space bar down, you can move the image around and let's get a little bit of this over in here. There we go. Now we'll be using this to make a mask which will allow us to go back in and clean up the edges later. So if it's not quite right, we can still go back and make some adjustments later which is much better than trying to do this with the eraser tool, which you can't go back and repair. So this gives us a bit of control and the ability to clean things up a little bit. Okay, so we have that tool. And again, you can go through and use this as much as you want until it gets just the way you want, or you can use other selection tools as well. Let's come in here to the marquee tools, and I'm going to choose the freehand selection marquee tool and up here, the polygonal option. And let's set that to add, which is what I want. I want to be adding into this. But as you can see, the nice thing about this tool is it's very, very precise. So you can use the large tools to select your large areas and then come back and use tools like this to refine that edge and have a cleaner edge for these areas that are a bit more difficult. And especially if they're straight edges, this polygonal tool is very good at doing straight edges. So I'm going to take this one clear around this tail, I think. Let's come clear around here and get that front edge right in there. And then I'll take it back to the beginning. That then adds that selection into our major selection. Let's go ahead now and zoom back out to fit. So I can go back in and you know, spend more time making a tighter selection in some of these areas using those different combinations of tools, but this will show you how well this works. Okay, we now have this done. All we need to do is to convert this into a layer mask for that layer. Now for that, I want to invert my selection. So select, invert pixel selection. Now the bottom part is selected and the top part isn't selected. Now go over to your layers, right hand side, and come down to this button right here. This is the mask layer button. Click on that and it makes a mask and masks out everything which was not selected showing that background image. We can now just deselect that. There we go. Now if I spent more time, I'd have a nicer looking edge in here on this. It's a bit rough right now, but that's because I was doing that selection very, very quickly, as you saw. But this shows you how you can remove a background and replace it with a different background. It's just a process of going through and making that very careful selection. Let's now go up here to our background layer. The top one, this is, of course, the actual foreground at this point. And double click so that you're into the background mask right here. This is our, our layer mask. And you can kind of see the boundaries of that layer mask right here. Now black hides and white shows. So I can go to my paintbrush and I can make a very small brush size here. That's a pretty good brush size right there. And I'll set my foreground color at black, click on that. And then if I come in here and if I paint in, this is also, I think, a soft edge brush. Let me change this to a fairly hard edge brush. There we go. Okay, if I come in here now and just paint along this edge, you can see how you can paint out that edge there and actually clean up the mask a little bit just using a paintbrush. Let's just zoom in real tight so you can see that better. There we go. Okay, back to the paintbrush. And I'll set this at a real hard, just clear to the top, real hard edge. There's that brush, and I'm painting with black. I'm just going to come right along that edge. And I'm actually painting right along that edge and painting black on the layer mask. And then that is coming in and removing that image. You can actually see the effect here. Just, I'm just kind of floating over this. I'm not actually painting right now, so you can see what it would be showing. I'll bring my brush size down a bit more. Let's bring it down to five pixels. That's pretty good. And I can now come in and just very carefully clean up the edge of this mask and get rid of some of that background, that old background white that's showing in there. You can hold the space bar. You can move things around. And then you can use this to just fine tune that mask and clean all those edges up and have this looking just absolutely perfect. So it's a long-term process. As you can see, it's not real fast. It does take a bit of work to carefully adjust and work with the mask and clean things out so it doesn't look all kind of messy. But it's fairly easy to do. It's an easy, straightforward process. It just takes some attention and some time to get things 
nicely cleaned up and clean up your edge and clean up that layer mask. But once you're done, you'll have a real nice change on that sky there. And you can then go back in and adjust that sky to make it look just the way you want. Let me just do this a little bit over in here. And then we'll tweak that sky just a touch and see how it looks. Just get that right in there. I think that will look good. And a little bit right up in here that I saw. There we go. Okay, let's go back to our zoom tool. Right click and zoom to fit. Looks much better in here now with that little bit of tweak on the layer mask. Let's now come down to our horizon layer, this one. And we're going to do a little bit of value adjustment on this. Let's now bring up an adjustment layer on that sky in behind there. We're here to adjustment layer right there. And I'll just use the levels adjustment. Here we go, bring this one up. And in here we can adjust the black and the white levels a little bit and the output level. I think I want to tone down the blacks just a bit. So if I pull them back here on the output level, you can see if I do that, it really kind of drops that back. So a little bit listeners kind of pushing that further back into the background a little bit, maybe right about here looks pretty good. We can tone down the whites just a little bit. There we go. So it's a little bit of tweaking on some of our adjustment layers in here. I think that's good. Close that one down. And there we go. There is our sky replacement. Again, I would spend a little bit more time on the edges in here, and I would do that cockpit in there. But there it is. That's how you can replace the background pretty straightforward here using just a different collection or combination of tools for the best results.